Good day, dear listener, and welcome aboard the Ozma. We have an exciting show planned for you. But before we get too far, a word to the wise. Though Project Ozma is considered to be a comedy, the humor involved is known to contain swearing, allusions to sexual themes, as well as themes of minor violence. A more in-depth description of this content as well as the transcript can be found in the description. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy today's episode. Shit, shit, shit! I don't... What do we do now? Grab them. We can't let them leave our room. There? Okay. Let's get this. Now we gotta figure out a way to fix this mess and dispose of... Wait! We don't have to fix this if we fix... them. That's one way of putting it, but it doesn't change what we need to... No, hold on. Let me finish. We can just cancel the command that's making them do this, right? We can? Yeah, yeah, we can. AI showed me how. All we have to do is pry open their chest and... No! What? AI? I... I think... I think I've managed to shut down the command. They can do that? By themselves? I... AI's a little more... alive than they let on. Meaning they can ignore commands? Which is a good thing. It means that they won't report us. That... Is what this means, right? I'm trying to achieve that, yes. Listen, AI, I don't want you to hurt yourself for us. If you just give me the cancel code, I can put it in and- Not without your own personal code, you can't. And and as an imposter- Oh, I didn't- Okay, I'll just- I'm sorry that this is happening, but please don't report us. I won't. You won't? Of course not. You didn't report me- The least I could do is return the favor. If it's up to you, that is. That command's still in there, isn't it? I... Yes. I can't cancel it permanently without the proper codes, but I can make sure that it isn't executed. I see. I say we just bash their hard drive in, just in case. Whoa! Dial back the villain hat, Quinny! We can't just... (sighs) Besides, AI's got it handled. Haven't you? That should be correct, yes. Hey, are you okay? It's... the process is a little... painful. And what happens to us when they can't keep it up anymore? When? No, no, she's right. But my creator wouldn't have given me this ability if my processor were unable to handle it, and I'm already starting to grow accustomed to- Of course they are. Would you lay off them, Quinn? They didn't have to do any of this for us, but they are. So the least you can do is fucking cut them some slack while they go against their own programming What if they aren't? What if this is just a trick to get us to trust them? What if they use this against us and ruin the entire mission and- Then they do! And you know something, Quinny? It won't even fucking matter because there's nothing they can do that will fuck up this mission more than we already have. Purse. Not even Neahawk believes in us anymore, Quinn, which means that we've already fucking lost unless we maybe, maybe fix this with the help from the one person on this entire fucking station who's actually helped us get something right in the past. But no, you'd rather knock their brains out because they might ruin the mission and have us do that all by our goddamn selves. I didn't... I'm sorry, Purse. You're right. And I'm, um, I'm sorry, AI. You've never given us 
any reason to not trust you, but I... Have a hard time trusting someone while your anonymous saboteur is still somewhere aboard the ship? Yeah, exactly. It's... Wait. You know about that? Well, given your recent string of fiascos, you, you don't exactly have to be a sentient supercomputer to connect the dots. It helps, though. Especially when you can see who gave the command and orchestrated this little encounter. Wait, you're saying that... Someone sent you here deliberately to overhear our conversation. That does seem to be the case, yes. So, who was it? I don't know. But you just said! Which should be impossible. You rulers, or, well, the, the other rulers, I suppose, they all have specific codes that identify their commands. Even there, most of them wouldn't be able to send me commands. So you're saying this came from the top? Like, council level? It's possible but only if they requested an anonymous code from Visa herself, which narrows down our suspects quite considerably. But the council? Couldn't they just, I don't know, decide not to give us independence without pulling shit like this? I agree. Is it possible that the code might have been stolen from a council member and used by someone else? No, the codes are handed out physically and can only be used once. So that means it's the council then. Case closed. No, Percy. Case very much not closed. We can't take on a mega-powerful intergalactic ruler with no more evidence than a shitty PowerPoint. Besides, we don't know that whoever sent AI actually had malicious intent. Yeah, but we know that someone on here has it out for us, right? And if they were involved with those earlier shootings, they know we're fakes. They're probably just trying to prove it to their council buddies in order to- Wait, someone tried to shoot you? Oh, no, just our previous fake rulers. We really are trusting them completely, huh? We sure are. Anyway, between that shitty PowerPoint and your unexpected visit, Quinn and I think that the people behind that are aboard the Ozma, and- <gasps> Hey! That rolls out Kamoy and Nihawk! There's no way they could have gotten those codes! How about we celebrate our friends not being backstabbing traitors after we figure out which hugely influential ruler it is? That's probably a good idea, but why would anyone want to harm you? <sighs> we think that Earth's unique resources may play a role. Wow. Welcome to the sharing circle, Quinny. If we go down, we might as well go down together. Aww. That's, like, super gay. Anyway, we think that the prospect of seizing those resources might be what's making us targets. Then it's not the council. Hey, I, buddy. You're sending out very mixed signals here. It can't be. The council controls all resources of independent planets. If they wanted their hands on something Earth had, they'd be trying to force you to succeed, not fail. Okay, first of all, that sounds very much not cool, and we're definitely going back to that after all of this has blown over. But maybe not- Well, what about invaded planets? Everything goes to the ruling planet. It's to entice and encourage leaders to colonize the unfit planets, otherwise the council would be forced to babysit half the galaxy. But why do independent planets have to hand all their resources over to the council? Not all of their resources, of course. It's more like taxes, I suppose. It's only if the ruler starts getting difficult that they seize more than some small ceremonial amount. If you ask me, it's mostly about maintaining control, and maybe making it easier to share the resources between the planets. But, you know, I never got into the politics of it very much. I'd imagine the hanging thread of total annexation helps to maintain their authority as well. It doesn't sound much like a way to keep peace. No galaxy-wide war has broken out since Visa put it into place. Whether everyone is happy with it is, you know, unknown to me, but it's the way it is. Sounds like a revolution on the rise to me. <clears throat> Regardless, if it wasn't the council, the code must have been stolen. And our list of suspects is back to being the Ozma attendant sheet. Maybe not, but we'd have to act fast. And do what? See if we can track that anonymous code. The command that sent me here was issued recently, which means that- They still might have the code on them. Precisely. That's great, really. One problem, though. It could be anyone. Very true, Persephone. I do have to correct your guard's phrasing slightly, however. The culprit wouldn't keep the code on their person. Most likely, it's in their quarters. And since it's only you young rulers that can access each other's rooms, your saboteur probably believes that the code is safe from anyone except themselves, their guard, and, well, us bots. So what you're saying is that we just start breaking into random rooms and hope for the best? It's a place to start, if nothing else. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I love that plan. Very bling ring. 
But it doesn't really seem like Quinn's kept a- We still don't even know for sure that they still have the code, much less where it might be hidden. Like I said, a place to start. Also, we can gather information about the other rulers. Narrow your list of suspects, at least. Which currently contains the entire station. Stop being such a downer, Quinny. I, for one, am so down to snoop around in some rooms. And will you be just as down for explaining that to the council after we inevitably get caught? What was that? The general dinner bell. And tonight, all the rulers dine together except the council. And since we already know your troublemaker isn't part of the council... They'll be at dinner and won't be able to walk in on us. AI, you're a genius. Oh, really? (laughs) Thank you. So what are we waiting for? Let's go pull off some space heists. And I'm missing something again, aren't I? They did say all the ruler's purse. For a guard not to attend, well, it might be frowned upon slightly, but it'll most likely pass unnoticed. But if you were to miss it... No, I get it. We can't exactly afford any more bad press anyway. I'm sorry, Percy. I'll be fine. You guys have fun doing super illegal stuff without me, while I use my dazzling personality to keep all those stuffy rulers distracted. But, wait. If guards can skip out, couldn't one walk in on you? I'll make sure no one shows up to cause trouble. Don't worry, Purse. I'll be in before the end of dinner. Use this time to try and minimize the damage caused today. Just because they managed to get to you doesn't mean they need to see that you're still shaken up over it. Win the other rulers over and we might still have a chance. You know, last time you told me not to cause trouble was right before I proposed to Miele. Percy. I know, I know. I'll try not to marry anybody else. And I really appreciate that sacrifice. Good luck, Purse. Shouldn't I be the one saying that to you? You're always the one who seems to need it. She was right, of course. I seem to have a knack for getting myself into trouble. But no one could deny that AI and Quinn got the hard part. I just got a nice little dinner party to attend. And I'm not going to say something stupid, like, what else could go wrong? But hey, it's not like I have very much to lose. Project Ozma is a Goose Thunder Network-produced podcast. Today's episode, Standing on Red Alert, was written by Sterling Ray and Ilva, and edited by Megan with sound editing by Cole Burkhart. Music was composed and performed by Benny James. The voices you heard in today's episode in order of appearance were Benny James as AI, Allison as Percy, and Petra as Quinn. Want to continue to stay up to date on all things Ozma? Follow us on Tumblr at project Ozma, on Instagram at project Ozma Podcast, or on Twitter at project Ozma.